A while ago I bought this knockoff Guitar Hero game from Goodwill for $10, fully expecting it to not work, especially because it was missing the wireless adapter and only came with one expansion pack disc. But I had to buy it because it felt like nice quality and I know I could just wire an Arduino inside to make it work for Clone Hero. Also, the more research I did about this Guitar Praise game, the more interesting it became. First of all, I had no idea the game has strictly Christian rock music. Introducing Guitar Praise, the new Windows and Mac computer game that lets you jam with the band, shred the riffs, thump the bass, and blast that solid Christian rock. The controller includes this slot on the back, just like real Guitar Hero guitars for the Wii, and it even fits a Wii remote perfectly. But after googling it, the only Guitar Praise Wii related thing I could find was this post from May 2009. Alright, how do we convert this thing into a controller that works for Clone Hero? Well, first we need to rip it apart. Just like in real Guitar Hero guitars, there are six wires going to the five fret buttons because one of the wires is ground and the controller knows a button is pressed when it is connected to the ground wire. If you follow the traces, you can see that the top wire goes to the green fret and then the second top wire goes to the red fret and so on, but the only one that's important is the ground wire because inside of Clone Hero you can adjust any button to being whatever fret. So we can cut the six wires for the fret buttons, the three wires for the start and select buttons, and the three wires for the whammy bar. Since the switches for the strum bar are mounted directly to the circuit board, we will just solder our wires to the contacts here. Now we wire the buttons to the Arduino Pro Micro like this. If you wanted to use a USB encoder like this one or this one, it would work except for the whammy bar because it is an analog control instead of a digital button press. This Instructables post exists where Lima Straker was able to modify the USB encoder to work with potentiometers, but it looks hard and I don't want to have to buy any more USB encoders, so Arduino it is. Now it's time for the co If you don't have the joystick library, then you'll get this error when you try to upload it. So let's download zip. And then inside of the Arduino IDE, we can say include library, add zip, and then find it here. And now we should be able to click upload. Also, before you click upload, you want to make sure that under tools, you have the board, the correct board, which you can find here. And then the port is on the correct port. Now to test that it's working, we can go here and then find Arduino Leonardo and click properties. And then you should be able to press all the buttons and see things lighting up as well as the whammy bar. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part where I explain the code. Okay, so these numbers here, the one through nine, correspond with the numbers here on the Arduino. So if you had mapped a button to this zero pin, then in the code you would need to write, you know, zero instead of a one or whatever. Also, you can see that all of these are false except for this one true, which is for the whammy bar. And if we go down here to this line, we can see that the range is set from 0 to 850. And this number is going to be different depending on whatever guitar you're building it on because it's a different potentiometer and it's just built differently. And the way I chose this number is because of this line, which is printing out the numbers of the potentiometer. So if we go to the serial monitor, then we can not see it. Uh, maybe if I just upload it again... Oh, okay. So right now the whammy bar is fully up, and every time I pull it back up, it's like a different number. Um, if I pull it up really slowly, then it's a lower number, but if I like flick it back really quickly, then it's a higher number. I don't know. I just realized that the number never really goes below 850, so I just chose that that was a good number, and... That way I'm not losing any range. 
that probably made no sense and I don't know what I'm talking about so I'm just gonna show you what I mean um, so this number here if I change it to like 400 something way smaller then the whammy bar notes max out way quicker like I don't have to press down as much on the whammy bar for them for it to max out but if I set the number to something crazy high, like 5,000, then the whammy bar is already going to be activated even when I'm not pressing it down. If you didn't already notice, the main board in the middle of the guitar is ripped in half, and that's because I soldered the wires straight onto the board for the strum bar, and I guess some circuitry was interfering with it. Um, and so when I first tested the guitar, all the other buttons were working except for the strum bar. And so I decided maybe if I rip it in half, it'll work. And it did, I guess. Three designs for Clone Hero guitars are available for download right now. I am using printables now because Thingiverse has been buggy for me recently. Um, all the pieces can print without support material. And from my experience, the fret buttons can play fine without needing to be sanded or acetone smoothed. Also, I designed a PCB that is optional to use, but available for people like me that are really sick and tired of lots of tiny soldering. Here's how to download and order your own batch of PCBs. So the Google Drive link for the Gerber files are in the description. When you download it, just keep it as a .rar file and then upload it to the website. I chose JLC PCB to order mine, but uh, maybe there's better ones, I don't know. The price for five boards came out to be only $5, but depending on whichever shipping you choose, it could vary a lot in price. Okay, bye, thanks.